Uh, earlier this afternoon, a tragedy struck the heart of the University of Texas campus. One of our students has been killed, and three others who we believe were students were seriously injured in an unconscionable, violent attack. Uh, the police do not believe there is an ongoing threat to the campus at this time. The custody is in, uh, the suspect is in custody, and UTBD, along with other law enforcement agencies, uh, APD and the Department of Public Safety are continuing to investigate and uh, the chief, uh, UTPD chief, will provide additional information and we'll provide updates uh, as the situation progresses. We have, uh, out of respect uh, for the, the victims uh, and their families, uh, we have canceled uh, classes uh, for the remainder of the day and events uh, through the evening. Uh, we ask that all our students uh, call home, call your parents, to let them know that you are safe. And we ask our faculty and staff uh, to help each other and reach out to family members also. Uh, at this time of this awful tragedy, our thoughts and prayers are with the victims and the families of this incredibly senseless attack, which attacks the entire UT campus and UT family. Uh, we ask any interested uh, citizen or uh, uh, UT parent uh, to call uh, uh, our offices. The phone number is 1-800-657-9400. Uh, this breaks my heart uh, to have to announce this. It breaks my heart that uh, any of our students <coughs> are touched by tragedy. They come here to learn, uh, to look to the future, and our faculty and staff are here to nurture our students and provide them the education uh, that they deserve. Uh, we are going to actively investigate this along with uh, law enforcement and do everything we can to continue to work on making campus safety a top priority. I'd like to uh, introduce Chief David Carter of the University of Texas Police Department. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Uh, I'm David Carter, Chief of Police for the University of Texas here at Austin. Uh, I'll give you kind of a rundown of exactly what UTPD responded to, the information that we have and try to answer your questions the best that I can. Uh, at about 1.49 uh, p.m. this afternoon, uh, UTPD received a call of an individual uh, who actually attacked or assaulted somebody uh, near the Gregory Gym, outside of the Gregory Gym. Uh, in less than two minutes, we had a police officer on scene. Uh, the officer uh, observed uh, the individual uh, walking away from an individual who was down on the ground he was armed with a large buoy style hunting knife. Uh, officer confronted him, uh, drew his weapon, ordered the suspect to get on the ground, which he did comply. So we took the individual into custody. Uh, the officer discovered that unfortunately, in addition to that uh, single uh, individual who had been stabbed, uh, within, a, within about a block, there were three additional uh, victims, all male, all determined to be students who were also stabbed. So we had a total of four victims. Uh, one, unfortunately, is deceased. The other three are currently uh, receiving treatment at uh, Brackenridge uh, Hospital at this time. Uh, it, the information I can provide you at this time is that the individual involved that we have in custody uh, is named uh, Kendricks J. White. Uh, it's Kendricks is K-E-N-D-R-E-X. J. White, black male, 410 of 96. Uh, he also appears to be a student here with the university as well. And it was described to us that the individual calmly walked uh, around the, the plaza, the Gregory Gymnasium Plaza, and uh, basically attacked these four uh, unfortunate students there. Uh, obviously, our hearts and prayers go out, uh, like the president said, uh, to the families uh, in, involved in this tragic event. I also kind of want to re reaffirm the importance for parents that have concerns to call 1-800-657-9400 and uh, we can, the university will be ready to receive your call and assist as needed. Uh, one of the things I can say is that at this particular time um, this is something that obviously rattles any community and certainly a college campus community like ours we are very fortunate here at UTPD or the University of Texas. We have great partnership with both the Austin Police Department 
as well as the Department of Public Safety, and they are both assisting us in terms of investigation. We've actually we're, we're going to be working specifically with APD homicide in the investigation of this particular uh, tra tragic event. Additionally, also I will say is that um, we are implementing once again going to 12-hour shifts for UTPD to reassure our community that UTPD is for them. Likewise, uh, Chief Manley from APD as well as Commander Ortiz from DPS have assured us uh, that they are here to help us as well in terms of whether it's uh, additional patrols around campus. We recognize that there have been a uh, significant number of uh, discussions on social media about all kinds of things uh, that we cannot confirm are true. Other kind of related incidents involving violence that are, that are either on or around campus. Each and every time we receive a call, we share that information collectively working with APD and DPS as well uh, to understand what happened here today and bring the offender to justice. <laughs> Again, I want to uh, stress that the campus is, is at this time, there's no ongoing threat from this individual. He was brought into custody within two minutes, but unfortunately, those two minutes, he was able to, uh, you know, injure some of our students. Can you repeat the spelling of his name? I'm sorry? Can you repeat his name? Uh, yes. Kendricks J. White. That's, uh, the first name is K-E-N-D-R-E-X. Uh, middle initial J, last name is White, common spelling, and uh, and with that I'll happy to entertain questions. Four ten of ninety six. Four ten of ninety six. Is there any suggestion that the victims are related, or any suggestion of a motive why they were chosen? You know, at, at this particular time we do not know. Uh, we have upwards of twenty five <laughs> witnesses, uh, so this this investigation is going to take a little while. We have, uh, we have obviously uh, 25 witnesses, uh, most of which are actually students on campus, so we have to take care of them, get the information from them. So his motivation, what was going through in his mind, I can't answer at this time. Do we know if it's related to the graffiti you seen on the fraternity hall? We do not know that. In other words, it, it would be premature for me to indicate or su suggest one thing or another at this point. Was the campus emergency alert system ever utilized? Yes, a, a, a text was uh, sent out at some was point. Was the siren used? No. Why no. Because uh, the siren would have indicated there's something else going on, like a lockdown or something along those lines. However, as soon as the officers arrived, they took the individual into custody, so there was no ongoing threat at that point. What would warrant a lockdown? If, for example, uh, we had responded and we didn't know where the individual was, because then you could say that there was obviously an ongoing threat to campus that we would need to respond to. Thank you. Sorry. Do you have any information about why Newton College or communications was evacuated? There, there were other reports of other kinds of things, perhaps <coughs> misinformation. I don't know the specifics on that, but I, I know that there's no ongoing threat. Right here, we make this job spring. West Campus has friends of information inside with George Watt. We will keep you up to date with confirmed information. Is that the other incident that you had referred to or alluded to that had been here? I'm not sure which, which one you're referring to. This was happening right now near 26th Street. Okay. Oh, oh that would be a like, wrong jurisdiction. Okay. Um, we're, we're, in, we're in close working, yeah. uh, working with APD in terms of, but at the present time, we're not aware of any active uh, threat other than the fact, that, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of speculation. Anytime there's a large uh, incident like this, you're going to see information going across uh, social media and hopefully we can get in front of that and share enough information for our entire community so they understand what's going That's on. That's going to be the UT students. I wanted to ask really quick about the alert that went out. I guess it went out about 2.14 or so is what some students were telling us, about a half hour after the incident had happened. I don't, I don't um, know the timing on that. If it were, if, this, if, the, if the subject had not been in custody, would you have used that alert sooner? So one of the things that I just mentioned before, one of, if there is an active ongoing situation on this campus where we have somebody that's causing active harm uh, and we've responded but we don't know, then obviously we're going to do other kinds of issues. We're going to put out that emergency notification. We'll use the outdoor warning system. And in this particular case, the individual was taken into custody instantly, basically as soon as the officers were on scene. So you can understand that while people are obviously concerned and sharing information back and forth with each other in terms of what may or may not have happened, uh, the situation was resolved uh, fairly quickly. Can you, can you just say that there was a guy with a concealed carry permit, a classic gun suspect, that you 
heard that at all, or do you know if that played any role in being? I have no information like that. Can you confirm that all the victims were members of the fraternity? I cannot. Was there anything that uh, tied the victims together? Did they know each other, or just strictly random? We we absolutely don't know at this time. Uh, in other words, uh, I would suggest to you that there was a uh, a lot of students walking at that particular time. Uh, the fact that the uh, individual actually didn't just attack people that were right there. He walked a little ways uh, and then stabbed another individual and so forth. So there's no reason to believe that they're actually connected. Excuse me if you said this was a what race were they? Were they all white? The um, the students I believe were I think three white and one Asian. Can you tell us um, if there was an So, you know, obviously the university, and I've said this many times to, to many of you, is that the uh, University of Texas is in effect a, a medium-sized city with our daytime population somewhere around 80,000. So there's going to be all kinds of issues. We're also a, a, a community of folks that are, that are, you know, highly engaged in a whole variety of different things. Uh, so the issue of vandalism involving fraternities, that was, that was known. Uh, to my knowledge, I don't know if there's any specific threats to, uh, to that community or if that's tied into, into this particular <coughs> incident here. I want to stress today because we got to interview 25, at least 25 people that were actual witness but also look at uh, other folks and friends and family, all those kind of things to see if we can understand what happened here. So I don't, I don't have anything that says <coughs> for certain that there's a connection, I'm not saying there's not. Do you know if the individual that was arrested was connected with any group or anybody pretty much that took kind of responsibility for this incident? That I, I'm, I'm not aware of. In other words, we, we have, he's basically just uh, been taken into custody. He's obviously going to be interrogated in, in that process. Uh, what, what, he's, what information he's providing detectives at this point, uh, both uh, UTPD detectives and APD homicide detectives, I do not know. Do you know year and major? Uh, I, I don't. He is a student, though, and, uh, Yes. Never mind how long he's been here? Uh, I, I don't, I don't have that right now. Any idea what the banner could mean that was hung on the, I think it was off our communications uh, building that said, do us in pay for bombs? You know, uh, I don't, I don't think there's any connection to this particular incident. I don't know what the motivation, there's, uh, there's political uh, banners and flyers that come up from time to time. I'm not sure what that is. Okay, so I need to make a correction. I pr appreciate everybody's patience on this. Uh, for our parent number, this is really important to get. The actual number is 1-866-657-9400. So instead of, I think uh, we said 1-800 before, but it's actually 866-657-9400. And again, that number is for parents, uh, loved ones to call and if they have concerns. I believe all the all the victims were in their uh, either 20 or 21. So just in the statements you made earlier about the timing the alert went out, do you think 30 minutes was acceptable? Um, 30 minutes passed between the time EMS tweeted that there was a situation going on on campus and then the UT alert went out about 30 minutes later. There's two things. Uh, you know, the university tries to put out information as quickly as possible so people will know. But there's a difference between putting out information to help people understand and uh, alleviate their fears and then also putting out an emergency notification. So we have a timely warning system. This would have put, fell within the time warning because there was no ongoing threat. We had him in custody as soon as we arrived. So it's a little bit, there's two different situations. Is there somebody that's actually running around that that's actually was doing this at the time? That's where we would use the emergency notification notification protocol including you know using the audible alerts and the outdoor warning systems and stuff like that so this isn't an, that's an information thing obviously you want to put out information as quickly as you can but you want to make sure you get it right okay we're going to do two more questions has he been charged with any specifically he, he is uh, currently being interrogated at this point it'll probably be a while before we actually uh, actually
should charge them. No, not not to uh, not to the officers on scene. That would be something we have to find out through the, the process right now. So at this point, you believe he's working completely alone. You don't think he's connected to anyone else who wants to cause harm to any other students? I, I don't know what his motivation is, but we we don't have any information that would suggest there's something else going on. If we find that out, if we believe there's a threat, we are definitely going to let you know. Okay. Um, we'll be giving <coughs> updates as details become available to us. Thank you all for coming. Um, we really appreciate it. Uh, and that concludes our press conference today.